on your rookie deal, your first four years, you become an all-star four years in a row. Mm -hmm. You make you make you you make the you were second in the West. Mm -hmm. You get your own shoe, your own deal with Jordan. Mm -hmm. You make an Olympic team. Mm -hmm. This is like four years in the league. We're talking about like four years in a row, just coming up, just getting into the league. Yeah. It was a it was a it was a run in hindsight. I didn't appreciate it enough. So I was on pace, like if everything stays close to what it was, three or four or five more all-star appearances, a few more playoff runs, you know, you're possibly talking about the Hall of Fame depending on how everything goes. First ball, my second game, ball. Yeah. Right, my yes. game was aligned. My game and where I was, was aligned to be just like anyone else who has been a four-time all-star in five years. Um, but so that, what happened? So that, that's where my success went straight to my head. Like the talent that I had, I was given so much so fast. And from where I came from, like I was hungry and no one believed in me. And I always had to like prove, 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 prove from Old Saybrook to University of Hartford, I had to prove. And I was determined to prove to people how great I was and yeah. how awesome I was. And, you know, I answered the bell every single time. What happened to me was the success and the accolades came. What I wanted was recognition. I wanted people to know my name. I wanted people to say, he's just as good as Weber. He's just as good as Kemp. He's just as good as all the other power forwards. And they said it. And so I grew up very sheltered. I told you my pops was a pastor. So you know what they say about PKs. Like we have a, at some point, yeah, PKs, preacher kids. Preacher kids. Some, gotcha. At some point, they're going to get a little out of their preacher shell, a preacher kid shell. And so when I got the success and got all the accolades that, I mean, I'm my, my own signature Jordan shoe, I was at the top of the top. And so I started partying. Like I started celebrating my success instead of saying, let's do it again. Hmm. Let's, let's, let's come back and get stronger. We lose to the Lakers. We'll get them next year. I started to celebrate every accolade. You're talking about a kid who didn't make his high school team as a sophomore at 15 years old, at 22, 23 years old, just seven years, eight years later, I'm considered one of the top 20 players in the world. And so I didn't deal with the success well at all. Now, see, I started to I started to party, smoking, drinking. Now I have now I have a question because sure. like, you know, when you say party, there there is, there is like, what is it? So I get the the partying. Okay, you can like I mean go out, you know, have fun, go to dinner, but you say party, you like just every day. So every day. There was a point in my career that I was smoking weed every day. And then when I ultimately got to Seattle, the drinking was recreational. It started off at recreational. Um, but I've been exposed to addiction. Like I have family members who have lost their life to addiction and, you know, who struggle with addiction. So I, but I'm thinking, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. Like I'm a star, like I'm a basketball star. Like this is what comes along with being successful is partying, women, drinking, smoking. And-, and No, I mean, I understand what you mean but from, the, from the standpoint of the lifestyle, of course, but I'm saying like, it's not necessarily true because like, what comes in is, you know, discipline and all the other things. 100%. Like there are, there are great athletes, professional athletes who have, had great careers of being disciplined and winning championships. You know, Kobe, now we see Duncan, Giannis, great, great, great players who have been disciplined throughout their entire career. But for me, um, my celebration of individual accolades was bigger than team stuff because nobody around me had done what I had done. Not yes. any of my 
high school friends, not any of my elementary school. I didn't have anyone, not my college friends. So my, I was celebrated for my individual accomplishments and I knew it. I knew there's no one who had done what I had done. And so my celebration land, led to actual celebrating. And, but, the, but the problem was that the celebration, the weekend warrior, twice a week turned into every day. I want to party every day. I want to celebrate every day. And before I knew it, Nasi, in, in Seattle, my th- second or third year, I became addicted to alcohol. Mm. It wasn't just a celebration anymore. It was actually needing to party or needing to drink, not even party, needing to drink all the time. Um, and overnight, from four year, four straight years of all, being an all-star, two-time all-NBA, the addiction to alcohol literally spiraled me out of um, being one of the top players in the NBA within 24 months. I was battling addiction, battling alcoholism. So wait, so okay, I get the I get the definition of it. Obviously, I mm-hmm. know, you you was I'm assuming you were drinking often and you were drinking, but was it every day? Every day. Every day, but, it was. It was. But did you? Did you had practice. You had games. You had. So, addiction, alcoholism. No, I, yeah. So I understand. But I'm just saying. Yeah, you like the addiction to it. How did you play? How did you perform? I managed, right? Like I managed to cover up. You know the the. I I wouldn't say I managed to cover it up. I managed to function. I was a functioning alcoholic, so I could drink. You know, prior to the games. Wait, to the actual game? Yeah. Actual games. Do you understand how talented you have to be? To be or crazy. To... <laughs> talented and crazy. Yeah, talented and crazy. But I'm saying, do you understand how talented you have to be to be able to do both? Well, I, well, here here's the part of it that the medical side of it. Yeah. I see. So if you're an alcoholic, like I was an alcoholic. I needed the alcohol to function, period. Not just play, like the basketball part of it, like I had gotten to a point of drinking where if I didn't have a drink, my body would, I I risked the chance of having a seizure. Like I was addicted to it, like literally addicted to it. So I'd have to like have a drink in the morning, a drink in the afternoon, so I wouldn't have the shakes. So it was, it became with, with alcoholism or any drug use, it becomes a part of not just your functioning, like, you know, going out and doing things and party. It has, it's, it's a thing where you have to have it for, um, to be able to, you know, keep your heart rate at a certain level. Cause you do it all the time. And when you don't do it, your body's reacting like, what are we doing? Are we not drinking today? And mm. that's where I had gotten to in my career where my body actually needed the alcohol. And so I got traded from Seattle to Boston. Even when I was going through this, I got traded from Seattle to Boston. And um, when I got to Boston, um, I was a full blown at the time, I was, I was still struggling with alcoholism and I didn't even make it through the entire season there with Boston because, you know, again, I'm wearing the alcoholism now, like full blown. My, my game is being affected. Um, I'm not playing up to the all-star level I was playing at before. Um, and the Boston Celtics ultimately said, listen, you need to get some help. Like we're not, we're going to support you and get help. And at the time, I just wasn't ready for it, Nasi. I wasn't ready for That's part of addiction and alcoholism. Like at the, that particular juncture in my life, I was not ready for them to say, you need to stop partying and drinking. I just wasn't ready for it. And so 
ultimately the $80 million deal that I had signed with the Seattle Supersonics, because of my drinking, the Boston Celtics terminated my contract. Okay. In other words, they took it back. It was over. So I had to, you know, three years into the deal, into the contract, because of my drinking, 50 million of that came back. So you basically lost 50 million because of, not because of drinking, but it's because of the, the, the outside of things and the, and the addiction. Well, we set, well, not all 50. Ah, <laughs> that's no, a, we, we, we settled, um, we settled, you know, it went to arbitration with the NBA, uh, and we settled for a number, but most importantly, man, like, I'll be honest with you. I know this went dark for a second, but I got to tell you when they terminated my contract, it was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Like it gave me a chance. Like I had been like hiding this secret. Gave you, gave you a reflection to see who what's going on. And and it and it embarrassed me. What I was doing in the dark, this deep dark secret that I had of drinking, was brought to the light. Like mm. that was like think about this, Nancy. I was this, this preacher's kid. I'm all NBA all star. This the perception of me was that I was a great. Guy and I am, and I was. No, you are a great guy. I, but but I, but I had this 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 secret of drinking, right? And so when when it happened, when the Celtics terminated my contract, it was all over, everywhere. So, so it it, so it, you- it gave me. I had to deal with it. Yes. And I didn't necessarily deal with it at that moment, but I had to deal with it. My public perception was a lot. It meant a lot to me, right? So. When that happened, man, it made me it made me say, I gotta deal with this issue, man. I gotta deal with, I really gotta stop thinking about being an all-star. Stop thinking about proving to people. I gotta prove to myself that I can live a sober life, man. Mm-hmm.